everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the show. So I'm Bernadette and I just want to remind you to like, share, subscribe, and our super chat is open tonight. Um, tonight, Vincent Richardson is joining us. Vincent is not only the producer of my show, but also Lon Strickler's Phantoms and Monsters show that was on before us. He is the founder of St. Louis St. Louis, Missouri-based paranormal investigative group, uh, Minds IP, which was established in 2009. Vincent has been the lead investigator on local cases, helping clients understand and deal with their personal paranormal experiences for 10 plus years. He has grown up in a house that is 100 years old and is also haunted. He has had near-death experiences. And Vincent is also an investigator with Phantoms and Monsters 14 Research. Uh, Vincent is also going to be the host of V, which will be premiering on this YouTube channel. Let's welcome Vincent. Hey, Hi. everybody. How are you? Thanks for having me on, Bernie. For you. How are you? I'm oh, thank great. you for being here. Sorry about that look up. <laughs> oh, You're so. Fine. You are fine. <laughs> so let's get into it. You are going to be having your own show on this channel. I am. I am. It will be on Wednesdays after personal reports. When personal reports is on, it's going to be at 10 p.m. Um, Central Time. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit about it. What's what are you going to talk about? What's going to be on? Well, um, V is going to be a show that is going to be about uh, um, basically the um, alien uh, conspiracy. Uh, it's going to be about um, high strangeness, and it's going to uh, involve different uh, researchers, authors, and experiencers. Okay. So let's let's get into what brought you into the paranormal. I heard you paranormal. had a near death experience. Let's talk. Yeah, let's talk about that. All right. I guess we can just jump right into that. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, in my uh, freshman year in high school, I was uh, sick with spinal meningitis, and I was uh, in a coma for a month. Uh, they thought uh, they thought that um, I wasn't going to make it, so they were unplugging me when I came out of the coma, and that kind of uh, started my uh, paranormal life, as the the show is called. So what what else did you did you see anything when you were out in the you know sure. like normal sure near now, there, there, I, like do, I do else does they have I, I do remember parts of the near death experience so yeah I can I can kind of uh, uh, talk about that I, I I remember a little bit of the coma I do remember my pastor reading the uh, last rites to me every day, which I thought was an interesting thing <laughs> and very stressful at the time. I, uh, I do remember when I was in the coma, I remember being in a different place with two elderly people taking care of me. I remember them. Uh, they, they actually told me that uh, my, my body was being worked on and that I was with them until, until my body was better. So do you think that this awakened you, this experience? Uh, well, at, at first, I, I mean, I, of course, thought it was just being being sick because of uh, how spinal meningitis is. It attacks your uh, mm -hmm. you know, central nervous system. And I, I had very high fevers and uh, basically was was uh, hallucinating. Um, so, you know, I, I, I thought first that it was hallucinations and um it i mean it started almost right away in the hospital with seeing uh shadow mm -hmm. forms and geometric shapes and what i began to learn are were like dead people in the hospital um yeah it, it all started pretty quick after uh i came out of the coma Right. Yeah, that from what I've also read, because I've had them as well. I mean, I 
that tends to take you pretty quick and you tend to notice things that like like you said dead people in the hospital when my appendix first there was a nurse in the elevator because we had taken the emergency elevator up to the OR and there was just myself my mom and my doctor in there but there was a nurse at the foot of the bed and when I brought that up everyone was like there was no one else there was no one else in that elevator so did that did that spawn your love of the paranormal then or your uh I, it, I, I, wanted to love, under, but... I wanted to understand what was going on. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yes. I mean, it, yeah, like I said, it started out with like shadow figures and uh, mm -hmm. people in the room that I thought were regular people. And then it, it, you would notice something off uh, about them. And I mean, th this went on the whole time that I was in, in the hospital. I mean, I had to uh, relearn how to walk and talk and 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 read and write it was a it was a long strenuous experience yeah so then what brought you into the world of ufos and aliens oh well well actually uh it's starting to work with uh lon strickland for the fortune research team and um you know um meeting people like Butch Wachowski and, uh, you know, people like David Eckhart and uh, kind of um, made me want to get more involved in that side of the paranormal. So can you, do you want to talk about Roswell? What would you like to talk about alien wise? Cause I know nothing at all alien wise, like very much. I can talk about a little bit, but you're like the person. So <laughs> Tell me what you know about aliens. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, as 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 far as the uh, as the whole uh, experience here in the United States started, uh, Roswell was the mm -hmm. was the big kickoff, and um, right. that that's when reportedly a, a UFO was down in Roswell, New Mexico. Um, on my show, we will be uh, looking at things through different people's. Uh, views and opinions so we're going to look at the, the different um sides of different reports that maybe you haven't heard before uh like like in the roswell situation there there's something called the uh, project serpo which is uh basically there was two alien ufos that crashed um that night uh, one in Roswell and one uh, several miles away, and uh, there there was one um, alien that did survive, and uh, and it did survive for quite some time, and um, it, they, they named it Even One of all things for uh, extraterrestrial biological entity number one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is basically the uh, start of. Um, the United States big uh, stake in the uh, UFO phenomenon. So do you think that still today there are aliens at Roswell at Area 51? Uh, at Area 51? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you know, um, a, a lot of people think that they moved uh, um, their, their location of their base after um, you know, years of the uh, Roswell being in the limelight as a hotspot for alien activity. But I, 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 do, I do believe that in uh, places like Roswell, New Mexico, there's uh, these deep underground military bases there where, where who knows what mm -hmm. goes on down in the deep subterranean military base. I agree. Um, so, uh, you're are you also going to deal on conspiracy theories as well, or just the alien conspiracy? Uh, no, uh, we're we're going to go through different kinds of conspiracies. I, I would like to uh, kind of s slowly get people um, uh, introduced to different kind of things uh, to, to to widen the whole uh, perception of uh, what's really going on. You, you you need to take it into small pieces because I, I mean, it's it, it, there's a lot going on. Uh, you need to know about uh, the different secret societies and uh, right. 
when these phenomenon started, I, not, not just here in America, but in, in the ancient past, um, the, there's obviously several right. races uh, visiting with different agendas. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot to take in. So on, on the show, we, we, you know, we're going to break it down episode, episode and kind of try to give right. people small pieces so they can ingest it a little bit at a time. <laughs> Right. So what would be your favorite conspiracy? Because I love a good conspiracy. I'm sure everyone listening loves a good conspiracy. What would be your favorite uh, like conspiracy? Like a, like, a like a favorite conspiracy. Like a, yeah. Like a... Like, a, like the, maybe uh, like what, the JFK time traveler, things like that. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> what do you think here? Wait, what, what's your favorite conspiracy? Oh... I, I would say the the time traveler the JFK time traveler one I like that one. Sure, sure. I uh, yeah, there's something called the stranger at the Pentagon, you know, the, the valiant mm -hmm. Thor phenomenon. I I used to find that pretty interesting as, as a kid, and that kind of got me uh, into conspiracies, really. So yeah. So for those who don't know, because I I know a little bit but not much, who is Valiant Thor? Valiant Thor, they uh, said, was a extraterrestrial being that came in and worked with the government uh, during the time, I believe, Eisenhower was uh, president. And uh, he worked with the uh, DIA and the CIA for, for some time, and uh, allegedly they have pictures of him. And he had six fingers on each hand and was from Venus. <laughs> Sorry. So, no, that that's very interesting. And what happened to him? Is Did he just disappear or? That's a good question. I'm, uh, the, 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 there's <laughs> different conspiracies uh, based off of that, too. And different uh, people have said that they've seen Valiant Thor and have uh, dealt with Valiant Thor. Uh, certain UFO experiencers um, have said that mm -hmm. a Valiant Thor has uh, knocked on their door and uh, <laughs> wanted to talk to them about their <laughs> UFO experience. But uh, oh, geez, who, wow. who knows what really happened to uh, Valiant Thor right. or, or, or even if uh, that he was a real alien amongst us. I mean, we don't know anything for sure in this in, in this whole thing. That's for uh, and that and that's the only thing we do know for sure. <laughs> Nancy Malcolm said that she heard he is still around. She's never met him, but she's heard he's still around. Hmm, <laughs> that's very interesting because, like I said, I know very little about you know the UFO community and things like that. Um. Going back to conspiracies, you were talking before the show about the new conspiracy going around with Aaron Carter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can, yeah. Can, can you enlighten the audience a little bit on that? You were telling you were telling me about it. Yeah. So I found it interesting. Um, Aaron Carter, who was like basically a teen pop sensation, he came out after the Backstreet Boys. He's the brother of a Backstreet Boy. He had passed away, I believe it was Saturday. Or so he was only 34. They found him in the bathtub at his home. Okay. Uh, Thursday evening around 2, what I was reading, that they had performed a wellness check on him. Uh, he said he was fine. He told the police to basically go away. His live-in housekeeper, sitter, was with him. Um, he was not seen by her all day Friday, come Saturday. Uh, she went to check on him. It was late Saturday morning. She found him in the bathtub, deceased. Now, here's where it gets strange. She made a 911 call, and his neighbors, who were, one of them was a trained nurse with a defibrillator. They heard the 911 call. They went to his house, banged on his door, said, we're here to help. We have a defibrillator. We're trained medical professionals. We can help you. She would not let them in. She said, he's dead. He's dead. Go away. And she, she literally screamed this, locked the door, and was heard running through the house screaming it. So then the police show up. The police could not get into his house. She would not let them into like his house to help. They had to force their way in. And then they found him deceased in the bathtub. 
So they're not, they're ruling out suicide, but they're saying that they did find some drug paraphernalia, but he's also been clean for five years is what they've been saying as well. So I think there's, there's yeah. something there. I mean, it, it's strange well, because I, he, he did. How, have, how many times yeah. have we heard about a, uh, someone, uh, a celebrity in Hollywood uh, doing something like this and going off the deep end yeah. and, um, unfortunately yeah. dying in unfortunate situations uh, a, a lot a lot of people would theorize you know that, uh, you, you have heard that uh, Aaron Carter had gone gone on some sort of uh, conspiracy rants before and some people may say like MK ultra and and uh, they were trying to shut him up or or <laughs> something that to, there, uh, to that effect. But uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of this kind of thing that happens. Uh, something to pay attention to, that's for sure. You know, you know, wanted to talk to Kanye West before this, and that Kanye is responsible. I doubt that, but I just I find it odd <laughs> as somebody who is you now stay away you know, from Kanye. He's seen a somebody man. exactly right who has seen you know who has been around somebody who's passed away. I I could not see myself you know locking myself in a house or you know locking the police out at the time. I just I find that very odd, and there was even um, TikToks that were being sent around that show he was texting him and saying she told him he was going to die it was basically the night before so i mean the, the, yeah, the yeah. hollywood the hollywood cabal is a real thing i mean that is a real thing and things like this do happen and 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 the reasons they do it you know are are, are different from case to case but they do these things in a ritualistic manner and 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 it, these same kind of accidental deaths or suicides or overdoses happen over and over and over again. Or or or, or just think of the uh, amount of people that have uh, died by uh, um, asphyxiation in in the same manner. I mean, these are red flags that we need to pay attention to. <laughs> I, I found Bob Saget's death very, very interesting. And then they sealed his, that you know, his cause weird. or his that record, was basically. Weird. That that was very, yeah, that was very weird. I had a family member who had actually, you know, hit his head and he went to sleep and basically had a concussion. I think that's what they said Bob Saget had. It was either that or a heart attack. I honestly, I can't remember thinking about it. But, you know, it, it, it's no, very I think, I, th I think because, they said, yeah, like he hit his head. And and yeah. went to sleep and just yeah. didn't, didn't wake up. And then the next day they said didn't wake up. It was heart attack. I think it was like a heart attack or something. And, and there was like drugs yeah. in this. Was was there drugs in the system? I don't think there was drugs. I think they were. No, no, it was, they was, were saying it was between that. a heart attack and um, hitting his head. But it was it was very weird. It was just entirely weird. And they said. That he seemed fine the night before. There was nothing really wrong with him, and, and then all of a sudden they just sealed everything up. Like they didn't want him to know about it, dig into it. God, and, um, coming out and saying that his cause of death was very odd. That is very odd. So very odd. yeah, it it is I mean, right. It does happen. <laughs> so uh, Marilyn Monroe, you, uh, when when she died, I did. They, they've had all these pill bottles all around her and said that she had all of this stuff and she didn't have it in her in her uh, autopsy report. There's there none of that in her system and there was something, uh, a different kind of drug in her system. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, these, these are real, these are real things that have happened and, you know, they continue to happen. So yeah. why do you think continue to happen? Do you think it's the king? What are what are they trying to keep them talking about? Uh, I that's a good question. Are, are they trying to hush him up for what he, what he has said? 
You can think of other uh, people in Hollywood that have come out and said crazy things, uh, like uh, Mel Mel Gibson when he came out and said that uh, Hollywood was full of people who ate babies, and uh, they all said he's mad, Mel, and he got kicked out of Hollywood and bl blacklisted. But I, nowadays, you hear something like that, and you and you've heard guys like David Icke come on. And talk about these things that you wonder, you, uh, you know, what what's true and, and, and what's not. Because, uh, I mean, s something is going on. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there somebody in Hollywood, I forget who it was, but she basically moved her family out of Hollywood because she was at a party. And she found, like, something in the fridge that was, like, ritualistic or something. And she was like, I'm done. And she, she was an actress. I, I can't remember her name. I think I, well, I've, I've heard things like that you before. Know? It, uh, no, I can't. I can't think of who you're speaking of, but I have heard yeah. stories like that before. Oh my gosh! I of young people going to uh, you know Hollywood socialite parties and and seeing things like that, and they they're out. They don't want to do it anymore. What do they, What do they see? Mm -hmm. You know, you can uh, speculate. <laughs> Exactly. Na uh, Nancy Malcolm has a question for you. Why is your show named V? Is it for Vincent? It, 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 it was uh, supposed to be a, 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 a whole symbol here. I, I, I can do my whole spiel for you. V is a symbol with, with multiple Go meanings. Ahead. V, visitors from unknown origins have been interacting and interfering with mankind since our creation. V is the veil of separating our reality from the next. V is the fifth dimension of unity. V is the symbol for the victims of society's evils and the vendetta against them. Conspiracies turn to truths. Mysteries are revealed. Wise men have tried to understand our state of being by grasping at its stars or its arts or its economics, but if there's an underlying oneness of all things, it does not matter where we begin, whether stars or laws or supply and demand, one measures a circle beginning anywhere, and V is that vector. And and that is that is my little spiel about what V means and why the show is called V. Well, I'm very excited to see that show. I'm sure everyone else is. Nancy said it was Angela Lansbury. That's who it was. Oh, Angela Who Lansbury, had seen huh? the the stuff in the fridge? Yeah, and she and took moved off. her family out off. of Hollywood. So that's was. Yeah. Didn't, didn't she? Oh, just gee, I don't pass, blame her. I probably would replay. too. <laughs> <laughs> didn't she just pass away? Yeah, that's that's what Marla said. I think. But yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. So have you? I I heard that you had gone actually to. Have, have you been to Hollywood? Something happened to you there. <laughs> yeah, Is that true? yeah. I, I went to I went to music school out in Hollywood. Yeah, and I and I was invited. Do to you want to tell everyone parties. about that? Sure, I can. I can tell people a little okay. about that. I went. I went to music sure. music school in uh, Hollywood, and uh, my t my teachers found out I was kind of into. Uh, Noki and stuff and they, they they saw some books in my book bag and uh started asking me to hang out and stuff and I didn't think of anything like it at the time you know I didn't think much of it at all and they were getting me gigs so I really really didn't look into it anything but uh it you know it, it got weird and <laughs> you get invited to like the uh satanic wedding on 666 for Stan LeVay and you, you, you go to the after wedding party and, and you, you see some weird eyes wide shut stuff. I mean, that that's really going on. I, I saw that. That really goes on. Mm -hmm. So, and have during that time, like what, what was, what was going on? Were they trying to indoctrinate you then? Uh, you, you, you know, now, now I think probably yes, probably me and my uh, girlfriend at the time, they're probably trying to 
get us both <laughs> indoctrinated indoctrinated into what i'm not sure but uh yeah mm -hmm. I, I think now that's probably what was going on mm -hmm. i mean you, you move out there so from that, the midwest and, and you don't know anybody and you, you don't have any friends and, and then all of a sudden these you know people with a lot of money start asking you to hang around and stuff and and, and before you know it <laughs> you you could be put into these situations where you, where you don't necessarily want to be put in and uh, hollywood has these things going on in them it is not a uh it's it's not just a tall tale it's a real thing do you think it's the allure of like hollywood itself like you know i could make it i could i could be someone here and then these people come in and they take advantage of it and that's that's how all these cults happen and and mysterious deaths and everything i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm not sure you know uh you would think um they're out there doing rituals and doing summonings and doing things to either get information or or uh or or to whatever else other means and why they're they're concentrated out there I, i'm not sure but but that is a that is a a, a mainstay of that kind of uh occult activity So Marla asks, do you think all of the debauchery stirs up weird energy? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You could you could feel you could feel weird you could feel weirdness in the room. You can almost see like a shimmering <laughs> in the air. I'm serious. It was like uh you, it was like you were you were peering into something where you shouldn't you should have been there, you know. Mm-hmm. But there was something that kind of like held you there that made you want to stay. There was just well, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at the time, at the time, you think it's a, it's going to be a spectacle, and oh, it's going to be a once in a lifetime, and this, and this can't be a real kind of thing. It's got to be, you know. So I was very tongue in cheek, going going there to, you know, because the, there's bands played there for, for crying out loud, and. They sold tickets to it, and I didn't think uh, I didn't think I was getting myself into something really, and until the right. in, in, until the after party, probably, pretty much. No, no, halfway through and the that's concert. When you <laughs> halfway oh. through the concert, I was like, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't be here," but here we are. <laughs> but you were there, <laughs> so yeah. oh, this is going to be going back towards the alien part of our conversation. The, sure. I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. Battle of Los Angeles. And, and, it, and, it's, and it? it's all connected, the thing, though. It's all connected. The okay. secret societies with, with, with the debauchery and all that, and aliens and abductions and and summonings. and It's, it's, it's all connected in some weird way, and, and that's what we're, we're what we're trying to figure out. I'm sorry, you were asking about the Battle of L.A. Can can you can you ask? Yes, me? I'm sorry. Yes, no, what, you're fine. You're the, fine. So, what, what was the question what about was it? The battle of what was the Battle of L.A. Was it was it something that's real? Was it? I just heard bits and pieces, so I'm not familiar with it. Well, well they, they saw they saw UFOs flying. And they went to intercept them, and 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 they were mm -hmm. shooting at them and trying to trying to blow them up. And uh, the newspaper was there taking pictures, and there's pictures of it. And they 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 were trying to blow up the UFOs, and nothing was going on. They could they couldn't do anything to them, and they took off after a while. And then uh, they. So Tried this actually real, happened. Real quick then to cover that up too. Yeah, no, no. This is a real thing. Yeah, you can you can look oh, that wow. up. The, the Battle of L.A. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And, uh, God, uh, I've, I've heard see. bits and pieces, and I wasn't sure if it was like part of a movie or what. Because, like I said, I know nothing about the phenomenon. You know, I don't think um, so a movie called that. Now that you say that, but it's not. I don't think it's the same thing. 
everything's a movie nowadays. Everything is made into a movie nowadays. Uh, so BPD1976 said, what did you see? I'm assuming at the concert... The concert, oh yeah, well, maybe the, the wedding, after, uh, the the, the creep, the creep, the creepy stuff at the after party stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, they did, they did, they did like a whole and they did a whole like animal thing where they like did an animal sacrifice thing with uh, mm -hmm. like a blood deal, and then um, in a, in, a, in a separate room. There were a bunch of people, and and this was true at the concert too. There's a lot of people that that were like dressed up in no no kidding robes with the face masks, and you, you couldn't tell who they they were, you know. But they were front row, and there were twenty rows of them. <laughs> and well, there was this whole room, and there was basically have you ever seen that movie uh, Eyes Wide Shut? There's there's a part where they go into like and it's a crazy like uh, orgy where it's just a bunch of people in masks and cloaks and debauchery and stuff and 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 that, and that basically what was going on in in a nutshell. Oh, that, mm, drugs abound and, and oh other goodness. things abound. Yeah, just everything you can imagine. And, and this is uh, <laughs> yeah. Holly, oh Hollywood, Hollywood in 06. Yeah. Did you see anyone famous? <laughs> <laughs> at the at the wedding? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. There's a there's a bunch of famous people at the wedding. Um oh Rudy goodness. Raymore was at was there. The guy that played Dolomite. He okay. was there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, That's wow. <laughs> there, there was um, a bunch of band people there, you know, like and bands mm -hmm. you wouldn't expect either, like uh, the Alkaline Trio and uh, <laughs> a couple other bands. I was like, really, these guys are into this? Wow. There's a lot of that going on. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of who else I saw there that I was just there. Thinking. There's a lot of people who are into it who you would not think. I mean, I I feel like that is just ingrained everywhere from Hollywood to small town America. It's it's something that. You wouldn't expect certain people to be into, but they're into. Right, right, right. F funny thing is, is, is Glenn Danzig was was at the the show part of it, and uh, <laughs> he like did his like little thing or whatever, and then uh, he was over and and I and I was over like uh, by this coat rack, and he <laughs> he came over and he was telling his buddy, he's like, oh, I need to get out of here. This is crazy. I don't want to be here anymore. We're gonna leave. <laughs> And I, and I was like, like he was just there for the show, <laughs> right? Maybe I should leave with Glenn Danzig. Th things are getting rough if Glenn Danzig's like it's time to go. Get the car. Oh my goodness! Car. That's that's car pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nancy, uh, did you ever see any reptilians at this at the Satan Club? No, 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 never seen anything like that. Didn't see anybody shape shift or anything like that. I, I will say reptilian. I remember a story when I was a kid. When I was a kid, uh, there was a uh, Crestwood Mall. Okay. And uh, there was uh, apparently a sighting of two reptilians in this uh like little gully over by the uh, movie theater of this mall. And I remember all these kids talking about it and everything. Mm -hmm. And that that's my only reptilian thing until I met David and all the weirdness in the world started happening. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about David Eckhart? David Eckhart, yes. I, he is a good buddy that, of mine okay. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh okay so david he, eckhart he he has person. had some he's had some serious reptilian um experiences and if uh apparently if you make friends with this man uh, they they will come near house and check you out and make sure that you're okay to be friends with him 
<laughs> Have you ever had that happen to you? No. From the David Eckhart Have experience? you had that happen to you? Somebody I, I think from so. David, yes. I think mm -hmm. so. I think so. I think so. I would. I would. I think. I think that my, oh, wow. that my mother and and Nicole would also say that. So too. Yes, mm -hmm. my house has uh, a whole Thomas Carroll says. Do you think some of Hollywood of strange things? Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> do you yeah. think uh, Thomas Carroll asks? Do you think some of Hollywood movies are slowly exposing the truth about aliens? I do. I do think they are doing that. Yep. Yeah, that's part of their soft disclosure. Yeah, I think they have been doing that for uh, you know since since nineteen forties when when the Roswell thing. I think they have been doing that a little bit at a time to us, getting us ready. Do you guys think we're ready now? Do you think we're ready now? I don't know. I mean, I I think with the do you think do you think that do you think the populace could handle it? Do you think the populace could handle it? I, I mean, you guys know you? you guys knows that that there's aliens, right? I mean, everybody's got. I mean, these UFOs aren't flying themselves, and we're not flying them. Yeah, I mean, do you think that we're ready for them? Because I don't. After after twenty twenty. I do not think that <laughs> yeah. the mass public yeah. cannot handle. We could not even handle a toilet paper shortage. Like that is. I think, I, I think we are we ready. I think we are ready. I think. Aliens. I think we are ready. I think we are. I think us as a whole. I think that we are ready to make a change as as a, as mankind, and, and and we need to do that. That's what we have to do. We've got to raise our vibration sorry that's my water mm -hmm. raise my it's vibration okay. of, be, of being <laughs> and, and and that's the trick that's the trick that's what we need to do as a, as a mankind i'll get off the soapbox go ahead no oh, you're fine <laughs> i just i like i said after after 2020 i i don't know I, I don't think people are ready. I mean, some I get, of us I, maybe, I understand but not. where you're coming from. I understand yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because that, that whole 2020, that was something. <laughs> um, let's see if there's more yes, questions. It was something. So, uh, right? <laughs> so, why don't you tell me about your house? You brought that up. Tell me about your house. And... <laughs> we can talk about I, my house. I've seen some my, stuff. My house, I mean, <laughs> my house is over a hundred years old. And um, when there was a prohibition, my, my house used to have a little speakeasy down there where people would get drunk and play cards. And my house is super duper <laughs> <laughs> haunted and has been since I was a kid. But here's this thing. <laughs> Things have really kicked off in the last uh, five, six years. It's really kicked off. But I assume that, again, is David Eckhart's fault. No. <laughs> but uh, things that I see in the <laughs> you're, house. You're going to blame him. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to blame him a little bit. If he's watching this, he, he knows that a little bit. <laughs> A little bit of this is your fault. No, but things that we see in the house are we, we see mm -hmm. a um I used to when I was a little boy, I would see this little little girl um ghost all the time. And I actually it was like my little uh I guess in invisible what, what are those called? Imag imaginary friends that, that I would see all the time until my yeah. my eventually my parents saw her and were like, Oh my god, it's probably not the best to let him have this imaginary I, friend. <laughs> I I can I can agree with that. We we have something kind of similar going on here. Um so and you've also seen a ghost cat. And there is a ghost still cat. Have your ghost cat. It is yeah. is a good no yeah we see it every once in a while. We saw it uh, a couple weeks ago. And it is a gray cat, and it is not. It does. It doesn't look like any of my past pets. Yeah, that's the first question: is Does it look like any of your past or living pets? No, not at all. Not at all. And now, when my dad was still alive, 
we he he said we it's upstairs in his room and he came and got me and he's like i got it cornered let's get the cat now i went in there and i saw the cat <laughs> underneath the bed like i'm looking under the bed and i see the cat and we corner it and we flip up everything and that was the last that we saw of it was that time when i saw it underneath the bed and it just and we've seen this thing uh, hun hundreds of times since mm -hmm. i i think just, that's a phenomenon it does different things you know just poofs yeah i don't i don't know yeah i wonder if i wonder how many other people have you know, like my cats that are alive i always wonder like mm -hmm. if that's what they're sometimes you know carrying on about I wonder because I and I also wonder if that's not a phenomenon in itself too, because I've had something like that happen. I have a friend who I I don't even think she's like into the paranormal, but you know we've talked and she's like, oh we we have a ghost cat, like it's not one of our cats. It's just like this random cat that showed up and it's it's brushed against my husband's leg and it's you know it disappears, and I I just have to wonder if that's not like something that happens if someone else you know what i mean like it's it's with others if that makes sense yeah well, but you have to know when, the when, reason why the people have a yeah when we when we still had beyond explanation going on we had it we had this uh lovely psychic lady that that, that was like a uh, pet psychic and and she said um that cats were really into and with the other side so when when they pass it's not a, it's not like a jarring thing and, and sometimes they they stick around and uh, that she, that's because i asked her about it and that's that's what she told me that's interesting that really is but you have to wonder if it's like so she my friend has been saying she saw like uh i think it was a black cat and she doesn't have black cats i've seen a white cat i have never owned a solid white cat it's just it's interesting i i find that phenomenon very interesting uh no, amy weird, asked how will the government strange it is right <laughs> uh amy asked how will the government release that aliens are living among us Let's see if I can get this how, how should so they? We can all see it. Or how how will they? How will they? How will they re release the aliens they? are living among us? I, you know, mm -hmm. I really don't think they're going to give it to us straight. I, it, I mean, either way, it has, they're not going to give it uh, to us straight. They could show up tomorrow on on the lawn of the White House. And they would tell us a partial truth and then just an, uh, enough of a truth where they didn't have to tell you what is going on, really. And uh, the, the government just, uh, okay. the, the, the military and industrial, because they, they're so rich and they're so empowered that... Uh, it would take an act of God to get, uh, you know, them to give us the technology involved with the uh, extraterrestrials and to give us the knowledge of what we're dealing with here. Because uh, I think we're dealing with a multiple phenomenon of, of different things going on, uh, living and non-living or super living or ultra terrestrials and they're they're not they're not going to tell us the truth. So, do you think that that aliens are living among us though? And do you think that like they are living among us? That they're here. That, do you think the government that they're here knows? on the planet? Yeah. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that they have. They're in cahoots with our government. Some of them. I think others are. Mm -hmm deep in the in, in the oceans where we see these um, these ufos underwater i mean there's different bases there's there's so much evidence you know like like dolce and and and, and different locations like that the, you, 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 of course there there there's aliens here right now yes 
-hmm. See, I, I wonder about that because you hear stories and you, it just makes you wonder. It really does. Do you, do you think there will ever be disclosure? Like, I know you said there'll be, there'll be partial Full disclosure. Enough, do you ever think that there's, yeah. Do you ever think there's going to come a day when everyone's going to say enough, you know, we, we actually, I mean, they're literally sitting there in the sky, you know. Well, I, I think they're going to have to. Yeah. I, they're going to have to tell us a little bit anyway. Yeah, I, I think they will. I think they will have to disclose something, and and in, in our lifetime, I believe they will disclose something. I hope. And what do you think about the hearings? <laughs> I really hope. I'm sorry. What do you think about the hearings that were held? The hearings that were held. Oh, oh, on, yeah. You know, they gave us that tiny little the, document that said nothing. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was big because they, they, they admitted it. They admitted it. <laughs> they said mm -hmm. that they don't know what these things are and they don't understand how they're mm -hmm. flying, you know. So that's huge. But uh, why do you think they I don't think, you know, them? like, hmm? I'm sorry, why do you think they named them? Was it AUPs or? Unidentified area. Oh, oh, oh why, did they, why, why did they? Why did they? Yeah, why did they re redefine the phenomenon? Uh, yeah, you know, that's a good question. They 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 did that with, with um, extraterrestrials and and evens and, mm -hmm. and I, I I you know it makes me think that maybe they're leading towards some sort of disclosure because they're starting to define and have these terms, you know, and use mm -hmm. these terms. And, and open yeah. public forum. I mean, that that's huge. It, it's for, for them to say, hey, there's this thing where, where we're on our, on our most uh, technological advanced uh, ships and we're seeing these UFOs, these Tic Tacs, uh, and they're doing things that uh, we don't understand. And for them to even come out and say that, I think that's a big deal. Right. And I will never use that. It's always going to be UFO with me because that is just what they are. So I'm <laughs> never going to use Because we're old school, damn it. That. We're going to say UFO. Exactly. Yeah. I am that old. <laughs> exactly. Never. I'm showing my age. Uh, Marla asked, do you think the Nazis in World War II had alien technology? Yes. Yes, I do think. I think that they, the, the Nazis were in cahoots with some alien beings of some sort. I really do. And I think uh, they had a big base in Antarctica and that could be what we're looking at up there nowadays, but I think I think they had a base maybe in Antarctica for reasons that there was already things there, you know. We also have another uh, question. Let me see if I can get up here. From, get up here. Hang on. I'm new with this. Okay. From Amy. Nikola Tesla was shanghaied by Edison. Edison stole Tesla's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, and Tesla died, um, uh, poor <laughs> and alone. And yeah. That's terrible, isn't it? Some some people, you know, did he find did did he find a, a way to use a time travel time, maybe time travel or something? Did he find a zero point technology? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. yeah, maybe. No, I just I I remember hearing about uh, Tesla finding sort of time travel or or something, or he had some kind of machine or. Something along those lines. Right, right, right. That's what I. Yeah, there's a there's yeah. a modern story but, of a man so, who who made his own Tesla coils, and uh, he was he he apparently <laughs> was able to 
jump three years into the future. If uh, you, if all you mm-hmm. people out there know the Art Bell uh, Madman, the time traveler story. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I don't you tell us about that one. No, oh, okay. There, so so there's this fella that that he was making a Tesla coil, and he he found uh, that it was doing this a little anomaly uh, up above the coil. And so he threw a screw at it and it disappeared for three seconds and then bounced around in the background. And so he, 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 he wanted to replicate that and did and was said, no, oh, if I up the power, I'm going to start throwing fruit through it. And he was doing it and it was getting farther away, the more powerful and, and he, he, he juices this whole thing up and he uh, basically jumps through it one time. And uh, apparently he then uh, finds himself miles away in a forest and he, he has to wander into, until he finds some civilization and is taken to a homeless shelter. And, and then eventually it gets a hold of uh, Art Bell again. And uh, Art Bell, uh, he swore up and down. He said, you know, for those three years, I looked, I looked for this guy all over the place. And this guy had backing uh, people putting money at him, and he, he, he disappeared <laughs> for three years. Who knows, though? And, and that's his madman time traveler. Did he just, like, disappear then? I mean, did he just completely go where? So whatever happened no. to him? <laughs> now, nowadays? Uh, well... <laughs> Uh, the la- last time I heard was an interview in 2016 or so on 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 uh, Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. He is, uh, I, did he ever try to do it again? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But is he alive? He was then. Yeah, he I said he went back to the uh, the warehouse and, and, and it was all empty and mm-hmm. yeah. So who knows? <laughs> you have to wonder what happened to his stuff. I mean, do you think it just no. it just disintegrated or you know, do you think someone oh, no. stole it? See if that? okay, so if, if yeah, if 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 he really did, you know, go through this time hole mm-hmm. and ended up three years and several miles away in, in the forest. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to say whoever was there probably freaked out first and foremost when when he disappeared and, and then did not reappear. So who knows if they took all that and did whatever with it. Who knows? <laughs> probably sold it for scrap or whatever. <laughs> I mean, trying to hide the evidence. Well, I, I, or, or, or did, did, did the uh, government get a, a bead on this and show up and take it? Who knows? Do, does it make I mean, a, 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 a measurable ripple of some sort if you make your own time machine and jump through it? <laughs> I don't know. I have not yet made my own time travel uh, I mean, machine. Note to self. <laughs> I, but if you, if you made one, would you want to go forwards or backwards in time? Oh. If you made your time machine, For, forwards or back backwards? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Probably, I I would want to go back to the future. No, <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Probably back backwards. Just tell backwards. young me. The lotto. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to time travel. You don't want to go. I think. I would want to go. My back. luck. With <laughs> my luck, I would end up somewhere, and uh, they don't even speak English yet. And uh, man just invented <laughs> fire, and I'm like, oh man, I can't charge my phone. <laughs> that that would be the downside for me. No phone and no watch. I find so that that would be, but I would want to travel back in time. <laughs> right. Um, anything else you want to tell 
the viewers about your show, about any of your experiences? Well, we uh, we are going to start on on a Wednesday after personal reports, 10 p.m. Central Time. Uh, not not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday. Lon's going to have a, a personal report, and then I will I will have my uh, premiere of sorts. So we now will, will uh, your premiere be every Wednesday, or will your show be every Wednesday, or will it just be after personal reports? It will be every Wednesday, even if personal reports is not on. You will have a Wednesday night viewing with me at 10 p.m. So that is that is when. That please do. Perfect. Please and please come and hang out and ask questions. And we're gonna talk about some weird stuff. We're gonna to try to try to connect some dots with everybody. I am very excited for your first show. I cannot wait. I will definitely be in the chat room watching. So Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll definitely try to figure okay. some stuff out. Yeah. And I would love to have you back once you're fully established on the show and you are the producer of this show. So I appreciate everything you've done. Well, and heck yeah. You are on <laughs> Congratulations you are on your awesome show. I think everybody Thank really uh, enjoys having you on the uh, lineup and and I'm I'm sh I'm sure happy to have you. I I enjoy being here and I'm just, like I said I'm still finding my feet being here. So my interviewing skills aren't up to point far with like you no know, lawns or anyone else's so i'm i'm still learning so hey, you're I doing great. I think all you're the patience i really do but i am excited to see what you're going to be doing and hopefully i can be on your show as well so i would love that absolutely i I'll have can you. be in the hospital well seat. thanks you everybody thank that. you very much <laughs> sure we will make that happen exactly all thank right, you well, guys and thanks for having me everybody i'll see you later Thank you for being here. Bye, Vincent. Thank you again. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for coming out. And thank you again to Vincent Richardson for being here. It was wonderful sitting down and talking with you. Next week, I am going to have Barry Littleton being on the show. It's going to be his first time being here and my first time interviewing him. And I am super excited to chat with him. He is an experiencer, a lifelong experiencer. And this is going to be a great show. So I hope you would join me next Friday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. I'm still a little funny on those time zones. So thank you, everyone, again, and have a good night. Bye.